Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I am so glad you're here to join me for our weekly style snack every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I share a style snack with you. And right now we are in the middle of a series, the Summer Capsule Wardrobe Essential Series because summer is coming. And so many of you are part of my community because you love capsule wardrobes just like I do, and you are interested in them, or maybe you have one and you want to refine it or you want more ideas. You could be anywhere on your capsule wardrobe journey. Um, you might also be here because you love classic style. Those are the two things I talk the most about. But this series is to help you uh, create your capsule wardrobe if you're if you're stuck if you don't know where to start because it can be really overwhelming I've shared my own experience before I won't go into that again you can see that I talked about that in the first part of the series I think but um, we've already covered accessories and tops and today we are talking about shoes but first I have an exciting announcement I love announcements. <laughs> we are starting our Shop Your Closet Challenge today. For the next 10 days, I will post a, an inspiration outfit for you, a summer inspiration outfit, and it'll go live in my group. <clears throat> if you haven't joined, it's Capsule Wardrobes for Classic Style, and we'll leave the link here. Every day at 6 p.m. Eastern time, I will post an outfit so that that evening you have time to go and shop your closet and you use this outfit as inspiration. You, you look in your own closet to see what you might have that would go along with this. Um, it could be the same colors, it could be similar colors, but in your color palette, you can mix the colors up, you can move things around, the patterns, all of it, <coughs> excuse me. It's so inspirational to see how different each of you makes this outfit and how you really do tell your style story by taking this inspiration outfit, adapting it to what you have in your closet and making it your own. So you all always love these challenges and I love doing them. I love seeing what you come up with. You inspire me as much as you inspire, inspire one another. And I hope you'll have uh, the courage to share your outfits. I know it does take courage to share your outfits. It really does. I still choke a little every time I post my outfit and I have to do it for my job. I've been doing it for years, right? But I just want to remind you that, especially if you're new to my community, this is a safe place. This is a kind space. These are wonderful women and no one is going to give you outfit feedback unless you ask for it. And that's something I just, I, if you're new here and you don't know that rule, the only time you offer constructive feedback on someone's outfit is if they ask for it. Otherwise, if, you, if you're not you know, ready to share a compliment or something, then just keep it to yourself. If they want it, they'll ask for it. Otherwise move along because it's hard to share it's hard to share your outfit. It's hard to post a selfie. It takes a lot of courage. And we are all about encouragement. Some women will ask for feedback and that's fine. And, and still we want to frame it kindly. Um, we rarely have any, any problems with that, but I, you know, the, our group is growing so quickly. It's important to, to bring those reminders because I know the rules in other groups are different. But in this group, we only we only offer constructive feedback if asked for. So the first outfit will go up tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So you have time to shop your closet to wear it tomorrow. And then I cannot wait to see all of your outfits tomorrow. So that's my big exciting announcement. <clears throat> um, and if you have any questions about the announcement or as I'm talking, go ahead and leave them here in the comments and I will um, answer them at the end. So shoes, one of my very favorite topics. They have always been my favorite. My mom loves to tell the story that I took my first steps in her shoes. I crawled over to them, stood up in them and uh, took a few steps in them. And shoot, I've always had a weakness for shoes, I have. And 
in the winter, I love my winter wardrobe because of all the cozy sweaters. My shoe wardrobe is pretty minimal in the winter. There's just, I mean, between the cold and the snow and everything, there's just not that much variety you can get in boots. Um, but in the summer, well, I don't have any of the sweaters, but I make up the numbers that I lose in layering by adding more shoes in my summer capsule wardrobe than I have the rest of the year. And there are three categories that I consider when I'm creating the stunning style capsule wardrobe guides. And if you don't know, the summer wardrobe guide is coming very soon and it's available for a limited time each season. So if you aren't on the waiting list, go to stunningstyle.com forward slash society and you'll be the very first to know when it launches. It's kind of a big deal to be in on the beginning. Um, so when I'm creating these wardrobe guides, there are three categories that I consider. And the very first category is the basic sandal. Sandals equal summer. I mean, sure, I start wearing them at the end of the spring as soon as the snow melts and it's way too cold and my toes are blue. And I hang on to them in early fall when it's still too hot to confine my feet to flats or boots. But in the summer, it is officially sandal season. And it feels so good to spread your toes after three seasons of closed toed shoes. And I am officially ready to say goodbye to flats and booties and hello to pedicures and foot freedom for several months. I love it. As much as I love those other types of shoes, I really love the freedom of sandals. My feet need a break. And the very first shoe that I would consider for your summer capsule wardrobe is a basic sandal in a neutral color that will go with everything in your summer wardrobe. I know, we, basics sound boring, and we've talked about this before, but basics are the foundation of your wardrobe and the foundation of every outfit. And without them, you just have chaos. <laughs> but they also don't have to be boring, so don't check out. Don't check out on me, and this is not, this is not nap time. The basic sandal will be the pair that you reach for over and over and over again. They will go with every outfit that you have, and they'll tell your style story if you get the details right. It is all about the details. It's a lot to ask, but when you're narrowing it down to this one go-to shoe, you want ultimate versatility. And that comes by considering color, comfort, lifestyle, and your personal style. You don't have to just have one pair of shoes, but I, I really want you to be thoughtful about this. And so I want you to pretend you're only getting this one basic sandal for your summer wardrobe. And what would you include if it were the perfect pair of summer shoes? So as far as color, choosing your neutral is key. What are your favorite summer neutrals? Because of the season, you might want to go with one of your lighter neutrals because lighter equals more summery. And if you think back to the accessories episode that we did two weeks ago, uh, when you chose that amazing go-to bag, I would choose the same color as the bag. And for me, it would be black. <coughs> Sorry, I've been sitting at my desk all by myself, not talking and my throat's all, but I'm not sick. I just haven't been talking this much this morning. Um, so this, I chose black because black is my favorite color. Black is my soul color. This is the bag. If I said, if I chose one, one bag for the whole season, it would be this bag. And if I chose one shoe for the whole summer, it would be this shoe. And I chose the same neutral. They go together. If it was the neutral that I would choose for my bag, it's likely the same neutral that I would choose for my shoe. So that's a little, a little cheating tip to help you not have to go through the whole mental process again. Or let's say I didn't want to choose black. I do want something lighter, even though I still want the black bag. I want something lighter on my feet 
then I personally would choose to match the hardware on my bag and I would go with a silver sandal. They still go together. I love matching my leathers. I love to match my bag and my shoes and my belt. I just, I like it. You don't have to like it, but I do. But this still goes together. The silver from my shoes goes with the silver on my bag. And that way you can get both. Um, and if you are super minimal, you know, in your classic, in your capsule wardrobe, maybe you would just choose one neutral sandal. But if I'm being totally honest, I would choose both of these. I would choose a light and a dark because I will get so much wear out of both of them. And they provide different looks to my outfit. <clears throat> the second factor we talked about is comfort. If your shoes are not functional and comfortable and easy to wear, you're not going to wear them. They can be the cutest, most perfect, neutral, basic sandal that tells your style story and goes with your bag. But if they hurt your feet, you're not going to wear them. So for a go-to shoe, comfort is critical. Sure, you're willing to sacrifice comfort for a special occasion shoe. We're all willing to be in pain for a Cinderella evening, right? But um, that's just one night. That's not the whole summer. These shoes need to be comfortable. You might have noticed I love wedges in the summer. Um, they're my favorite type of sandal for the summer. But I have my own personal height limit, and this is about it. Um, because if they're too high, I can't walk in them um, without looking like a drunk baby giraffe or requiring assistance. And that's just not how I live my life. Um, I need to be able to walk. I need to be able to move around. And if they're heavy, I also won't wear them. That's another factor. And it's, it's hard to find an uncomfortable sandal because very little of it touches your feet. But when it comes to a wedge, the height and the weight are a big deal to me. I also love a little bit of cushion right here. Um, I won't say no to that. It's not an absolute must, but it's it's a nice a nice perk if, if I'm going to be wearing them a lot. The next factor to consider before you buy these basic sandals is your lifestyle. Your your summer lifestyle is probably very different than it is say during the winter. The summer weather means we're more active and we get outside more. We go more places. We need to be able to walk around safely and comfortably. And for you, that might mean a flat sandal. And when I had a bunch of little ones, it definitely was a flat sandal for me. My personal rule when I had littles was I would not wear any shoe that I could not outrun them in, in case they bolted for the parking lot. I had my first were triplets and then I had five in three years. And then three years after that, I had my sixth. So I gave birth to a daycare and I was always, there was always the risk of at least one of them running for the parking lot. And I could not be uh, inhibited by my shoes. Safety first. I also didn't want to stumble carrying car seats, you know, like, so I am out of that stage now. My youngest is six. She doesn't run for the parking lot. And my oldest are 13 they don't run into the parking lot either. And so I can wear wedges now. I would never have worn wedges when they were young, but I'm in a different stage of my life. My lifestyle has changed. <clears throat> so you might prefer a sandal more like this. Very easy to wear. I could chase a kid down in these. They're not gonna flip off my feet. They've got the, the heel strap. Um, and the sole has a reasonable amount of traction. I'm not gonna slip and slide. So those are a great option if you need a flatter sandal. And then the last uh, factor to consider is your personal style. My favorite places to tell my style story are is in my accessories, and that includes my shoes. I personally require edgy details to balance my minimal classic style. That's my style. And it, my number one style challenge in the summer is 
bringing those edgy details into my wardrobe. It's very hard. The, the clothes are inherently lighter and breezier and I just, there are no boots and there are no moto jackets and it's just really hard for me to get the details I need in my summer wardrobe. And so all of my summer shoes have to tell my style story. Your shoes can make or break your outfit and being really conscious of the details that make you feel like you are important especially in a capsule wardrobe, because every piece has to count. Every piece needs to be, not every piece has to be loaded with, for me, leather and zippers and studs and everything. I'm wearing just a basic pair of shorts today. There's nothing edgy about my shorts, but I need those details somewhere in my outfit. And today it's my stabby earrings and this, angular pattern here. <clears throat> my shorts aren't edgy at all and my shoes not super edgy. Um, I'm wearing these. I'm currently barefoot because I had to show you my my silver sandals but um, they're they're not overtly edgy but they're edgy enough for me. So um, I get my edgy details in my sandal in places like the pyramid studs on these wedges. I love it. There's not a ton of it, right? It's not the whole thing here and here and here, but just a little bit, these, these uh, studs around my ankle, that's enough for me. And that immediately, that plus some edgy jewelry and my stabby bag right there that's enough edge for me. And that gives me what I need, even if my t-shirt and my shorts or my skirt are purely classic. So for me, it's been really important to, to factor that in as I buy shoes for summer. Okay, the second category of summer capsule wardrobe shoes that I consider when I'm creating the uh, stunning style capsule wardrobe guides is a statement shoe. Statement shoes are a staple in my wardrobe any season of the year, but especially in the summer. And summer temperatures means it's likely to be a sandal, but it doesn't have to be, especially for those of you who work outside the home and you're not allowed to wear sandals to work, whether it's too casual or it's not safe. There are a lot of reasons we wouldn't be allowed to wear sandals to work. So this statement shoe doesn't have to be a sandal, but for a lot of us, it will be, for me it is. And with, with a very selective wardrobe, the way a capsule wardrobe is, it's important that each item pulls its weight, like I said. So when you're choosing your statement shoe, factor in the comfort, the lifestyle, and the personal style that we already covered. But there are a few other things to consider when choosing your statement shoe. And I want you just for the sake of uh, the mental gymnastics to pretend it's one statement shoe. I really want you to narrow in on what your true preferences are. And because clothes are smaller in the summer, it's easier to bring in color and pattern without feeling overwhelmed the way it would if you did the same in the seasons where the clothes are much bigger. And somehow when the temperatures rise, color blocking, color stacking, and color combining seem more appropriate if not downright mandatory. And not only that, just like with um, your clothes, with shoes, the smaller they are, the easier it is to wear something bold. Red sandals, any day of the week. Red over the knee boots, I don't think I ever would. Size and quantity matters. So um, if you want to add some extra color, pattern or both to an outfit, statement shoes are a great option. So if we're pretending that you're only getting one pair of statement sandals, would you choose color or would you choose pattern? And like I said, it doesn't have to be just one, but for the sake of the exercise, let's pretend. If you want color, you want to choose one that goes with at least most of your outfit, if not everything. 
And is there a color that you would not wear in large doses? It would feel uncomfortable to you, but would make a great color combination with the rest of the colors in your capsule wardrobe. That could be a good option. Another choice, and maybe the most obvious choice, would be to choose your favorite or signature color because you can never go wrong choosing that. You will obviously have other things that go with it. It's something you feel comfortable in, you feel like a million bucks in, so it's a fantastic choice. <coughs> Sorry, dry, dry throat. Um, if you want, so you're, you're guaranteed to love your signature or favorite color, right? And you're likely to have more of it in your wardrobe. We talked about that last week with tops. And it's likely to just get along with the rest of your wardrobe very easily because you've been buying it all along and buying things that go with it all along. Um, if you're looking at color, for me, uh, red is an obvious because I love red. After black, white, and blue, most of my wardrobe is honestly black, white, white, and blue. The next color after that is red. And red goes with black, white, and blue. <laughs> and um, so for me, red would be my first pick in a color for summer. Um, if you want pattern, pick one that goes with your summer style. There are patterns that I wear during certain seasons, but in the summer, um, you may not wear those other patterns you might feel particularly drawn to certain patterns in the summer. For me, that would be stripes or leopard, but that's the answer almost every season of the year, stripes or leopard. Um, but for you, it could be floral, it could be polka dots, it could be gingham, it could be a fruit print, it could be mermaids swimming on your shoe, it could be a paisley, it could be any pattern, just it, you need to love it. And then you need to ask yourself, do you want your pattern to be colorful or do you want it to be neutral? How many colors do you want in your pattern? On something as small as a shoe, it's hard to wear a large scale pattern because there's so little real estate. And in a tiny pattern, if you add too many colors, it can get very busy and the colors can get lost. That's not always the case, but it's just something to think about. So my definite summer choice would be this leopard wedge. I searched for a year and a half to find the perfect leopard wedges for me. I finally got them last summer and I have worn and worn and worn and worn them. So for me, that is a no brainer for you. It might be the worst idea ever. So consider what you like, not what I like. And then you can also get color and pattern in one shoe. So I have and love these. These, I included these in the summer 2018 capsule wardrobe guide. Huge hit. I wear them all the time still. And I still get, I wore these uh, on Monday. And I still get questions about them every time I wear them. Um, but they're combining the, the bold pink color with this stripe pattern on the wedge heel. And I love them. I've got these all lined up on my desk on top of shoe box lids because I don't want the bottom of my shoes on my desk. And so they're stacked super carefully. <laughs> the last category is an active shoe. Summer means picnics. It means going to the park. It means barbecues, fireworks, after dinner walks, and basically getting out and about outside. And while your other, your two other shoes do need to be comfortable and fit your summer lifestyle, without a doubt, sometimes you really do need an active shoe. This can be something as sturdy as a hiking shoe. If that's an activity you do often enough to include it as part of your core summer capsule wardrobe. I like to hike. I don't do it enough that it would be part of my core wardrobe. I do have a pair of hiking shoes, but that's part of my, um, that's just like its own little, it's kind of like pajamas, right? Pajamas and underwear don't count. Swimsuits don't count in my summer capsule wardrobe and hiking slash camping slash like for real active wear, like legit, we're going to get down and dirty. That is not part of my my summer capsule wardrobe. That's just 
a special category. I have a few pieces of, I pull them out when I need them. But for you, you might go out a few times a week and I have friends who do. And so something sturdy like that would be part of their summer capsule wardrobe because um, they go, they go on the trails daily. I, you know, so that could be yours. For me, it's more like a sneaker. When we set off fireworks, our family rule is, or when we are around the fire pit, our family rule is closed toed shoes for safety reasons. Something unexpected like the end of a sparkler breaking off and onto your feet can burn you badly. Um, it's not still technically on fire, but they are hot, hot, hot. Something popping out of the fire pit can burn your feet. That's our personal rule. So we all have sneakers for that. I also turn to slip on sneakers when we're um, grilling because I'm up and down the deck stairs to get to the table in and out of the house to go from the kitchen to the grill, balancing platters of food while I'm navigating the deck stairs in a pair of wedges is a definite no from me. That's just, that's just, uh, I am not graceful enough for that. Um, and so if, you know, if we have a 4th of July party and we're grilling, I am for sure wearing my sneakers. And even last night we grilled and we ate outside. I changed into my sneakers because I don't want to die on the stairs. My husband and I have already started going on after dinner walks and I don't want to be focused on my feet. I want to enjoy his company and the setting sun. We can walk as far and as long as we want to without my footwear cutting it short. We don't have to say, oh, my feet hurt. Let's go back. Nope. We can go as long as we want. And unless I want another sprained ankle, I am definitely not wearing wedges to the park, to soccer games, to team parties, maybe not even to the swim meets if we end up having swim meets this summer. So um, I wear sneakers quite often in the summer or if we're gonna be out, like if we, uh, if you go to like Disneyland or an amusement park or you're going out somewhere all day, I'm not wearing sandals. Even, the, even these flat sandals that are quite comfortable at a whole day of these somewhere like Disneyland, um, I would be in tears by the end of the day. My feet would hurt so bad. Definitely wearing a sneaker for something like that. So sneakers slash active shoes have a spot in my summer wardrobe and I have a couple of options to show you. I have these red patent shiny slip-ons, not particularly edgy, uh, it, but I love them. <laughs> I love how shiny they are, I love how red they are, and I do wear them, and when I wear those, I get my edgy details elsewhere in my outfit. And then I have these. These are my favorites. I wear these a lot, three seasons a year. I wear them spring, summer, and fall. So these get a lot of love in my wardrobe and they cross over uh, from season to season for me. So these are a definite yes from me. If I wanted something more neutral, I ran out of space on my desk, hold on. I would go with these black. And these have a reptile embossed texture, which is edgy but um, these go with everything. So all three of these shoes get worn several seasons a year by me. And I've learned that that's about my limit as far as sneakers go. <clears throat> I really don't need more than that. If you're more sporty classic, then you might want more sneakers and fewer wedges. So you can go with neutral, you can go with a pattern, you can go with color or you can combine color and pattern. Your pattern can be neutral. Like what, however you want to mix it up, um, what suits you and your style is what you should do. So I do have a bonus category and this is not part of my official summer capsule wardrobe. This goes with uh, one of my special occasion capsule wardrobes that gets a lot of time, hopefully, in the summer. And that would be um, slides or flip-flops. If you're anything like me, um, 
you hope to spend some time at the pool or the lake or anywhere that you might need to kick off your shoes easily, that your feet might get wet. And one, what I would consider is a slide or a flip-flop. And they can be stylish and functional. I want you to think outside the foam rubber thong box. There are some really just ugly flip-flops out there and they don't have to be. So um, I've had these for a few years, so they're not as pristine as they once were, but I have these silver ones that I wear to the pool. Um, I wear them to the lake sometimes. Um, if I'm going, if I want something to go in the lake, that's a different pair of shoes, but just hanging around on the shore, yes, I wear these. Uh, if I have taken off my shoes and I want to check the mail, yes. Or a pair of slides like these. So the, the flip-flops are neutral, right? Silver goes with everything. These are blue, love blue. Blue goes with everything in my wardrobe. And they've got this um, croc and bob. Uh, texture on them so that makes them a little edgier and they're just cuter and uh, more stylish than the foam rubber thongs but they're just as functional maybe more because you don't have to cling on so tightly with your toes and these really do look like part of an outfit so this could even be in more of the statement shoe category if you want to slide like this they still look dressed up enough to be part of your outfit. And the other place that I wear shoes like this, I wear these to yoga, coming and going from yoga. Um, I wear them if we go on vacation anywhere resorty. I wear these around the resort. Um, so yeah, these get a lot of wear from me in the summer, but they're not technically part of my summer capsule wardrobe because they're they're more part of my swimwear slash yoga wear and those are just separate categories because I don't do that every day well I, I do go to yoga a few times a week or I did um, we're going to talk in positive terms I will be going to yoga a few times a week again this summer but I just wear them coming and going and I wear them after changing into my yoga clothes to go do that specific thing so I don't I don't count them as my as part of my core summer capsule wardrobe because I don't usually wear them with outfits. I have worn those blue slides a time or two, but we were on vacation at a resort. So yeah, it's back, it's back into the swim category. Okay, so those are the shoes that I, the shoe categories that I consider when I'm creating the stunning style um, capsule wardrobe guides and the summer guide is coming very soon and I curate the whole wardrobe. I give you the links to shop from if you need, but most of it you should hopefully be able to shop your closet for. That's the goal, not for you to go out and have to buy a whole new wardrobe. Most of it is classic basics that you can uh, shop your closet for and then a few refresher pieces if you want to freshen up your wardrobe the links to buy what you need, 100 outfit combinations to show you how to wear it all together, and then a war monthly wardrobe calendar that tells you which outfit to wear each day if you just don't even want to make that decision. Not to mention the amazing Facebook group that's exclusive to the Stunning Style Society. So if you want to get on the waiting list, you can go to stunningstyle.com forward slash society, and you will be the first to know when it launches. All right, I am going to look at the comments and questions. Patty says, good morning. Hello, good morning, Patty. Hello to Maddie. Um, Marcy says, hi, thanks for offering this series. Well, you're welcome, Marcy, and I hope it's really helpful to you um, in getting, uh, getting your capsule wardrobe together. Veronica says, evening, honey. <laughs> evening, I like it that you call me honey. Thanks, Veronica. <laughs> Um, Maddie says, yippee, I'm assuming you're excited about the Shopper Plaza Challenge. Uh, a Facebook user, I, so I'm using this uh, streaming app and there's a link up at the top description. If you click on that, I can see your name. And if you don't, I can't. So it just shows me Facebook user says, sounds fun, I can't wait. And Facebook user, I wish I knew your name. 
but I'm so glad it sounds fun and I can't wait either. Um, Karen says, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Maddie says the safety of community is so important. It really is. And um, it, it's very important to me that my community be safe and uh, no one needs negativity in their lives. And I will not allow my space to be somewhere that anyone feels negativity or unsafe in any way. This is a happy, positive space that you can come to always. Another Facebook user says, hi, hello. Nancy says, hi, April, here from Detroit. Well, hello, Nancy, I'm so glad you made it. Suzanne says, I was late, what was the announcement? Suzanne, we're doing a shocker closet challenge starting today, I'll load the first outfit. And when we're done here, um, you can go back and watch the beginning and, and hear the whole announcement. Um, Kimberly says, do you consider sandals acceptable for work? Well, Kimberly, that depends on where your work and what your employer says. Uh, for some, uh, so it doesn't actually matter what I think, but <laughs> sandals are more casual. They just are. And so for some workplaces, it's just considered too casual and it's a no. For some workplaces, it's a safety reason and it's a no. And for other places, it would be a hygiene reason and that would be a no. So um, you would have to, I mean, I think you can have a fantastic uh, business casual or dressy casual outfit that includes sandals. And if your employer is okay with that, go for it. But you know, it's their rules that really matter. But as far as style goes, I think absolutely. Um, Lori says, I feel like I can't wear sandals until I get a pedicure. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I gave myself one uh, yesterday. So my toes are fresh again. Um, mm -hmm, they're on display. So I get it. Ken says foot freedom. I love it. Yeah, I do too. I, yeah. Uh, another Facebook set user says, I love those shoes. Well, thank you. Um, and another Facebook user says nice silver. And another, maybe it might be the same Facebook user. So if you are, it might be uh, belt bag and shoes all the way. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, I take my shoes very seriously. I love them. They're, it's fun to me. And when we talked about splurging versus saving a few weeks ago and what, you know, what's a waste of money or not it really depends on what your values are. I love shoes. That's fun to me. And so I value it. And so if I'm getting wear out of them, it's not a waste of money to me. Whereas someone else, it might just be ridiculous. But yeah, I love, I love shoes. Barbara says, I love wedges in the summer. I do too. I love them a lot. Sorry, I'm looking for my water bottle just because my throat is so dry. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, they're my favorite type of sandals for the summer now that my kids are bigger. Suzanne says, I will need to wear flats year round due to my amputation must have a shoe to be supportive when I wear it on my left foot. Suzanne, absolutely, that's critical to you. And that's a factor that has to be taken in when you're choosing your summer shoes. And um, you are smart enough to uh, follow that rule. I know it can be tempting to think you might not have to sometimes, but you know, safety and, and uh, comfort, especially in your situation is absolutely the number one most prior, most important priority. <clears throat> and some of you might have to have special inserts or supports in your shoes. And that's something that you have to consider it has to be at the top of your list. Um, a Facebook user says Nordstrom has a great lightweight linen moto jacket just FYI. <sighs> Don't tempt me with more moto jackets. But um, no, seriously, we get a month of triple digit heat here. I can't, <laughs> it's too hot. Um, Sharon says, hi, hi, Sharon. Cecilia is glad to be here from Phoenix. Um, and I'm glad you're here. Sharon says, color versus pattern. Color seems more minimal. Uh, it can be, if or if you're really minimal and you just want a 
tiny dose of pattern, your shoes, your sandals are a great way to get it into your wardrobe. If you're super minimal, just that little bit could be the perfect amount. Um, a Facebook user says, hello, beautiful April. Well, thank you. Hello to you too. Um, Karen says, hello from Chicago. She, Carmen says, I have the same shiny red sneakers and I love them. Oh my gosh, they're so comfortable. All three of mine are so comfortable and that is critical. Don't assume just because it's a sneaker, it's comfortable. I bought a pair. I just tried them on in the store. I didn't actually walk around and I was like walking on wooden blocks. So hard and stiff. I mean, the sole was so hard and stiff and no, if I wanted that, I'd wear flats, you know, like, no, if I'm wearing sneakers, my feet are going to be half biggie and those red ones are super comfortable. Pat says, I love Okabashi sandals for summer. Pat, I've not heard of those. I'll have to look those up. Leslie says, I love sandals. I really like the first silver ones you showed. I never considered silver neutral. How exciting. Oh yes. Silver is one of my neutrals and my silver sandals get a lot, a lot of wear from me. Judith says, great, wonderful, helpful. I'm so glad. Uh, Sandra says, good morning. Hello, Sandra. Debbie says, I love your top today. Thank you, Debbie. I also have it in white. Um, I've had these for a few years and I wear them a lot. I love them. Another Facebook user says, where do we find the Shaka Closet Challenge? It will be inside the Capsule Wardrobes for Classic Style Facebook group. So we will leave the link to join the group here. And um, you that's where I'll be posting the outfits. And that is where you can share your personal outfit. Let's see. Uh, another Facebook user says, hello, hello to you. Elizabeth says, always wonderful to be able to spend this time with you and the added bonus of learning new things. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. I feel the same way. I enjoy spending this time with you and on top of it, I enjoy sharing. So I'm glad you do as well. Um, another Facebook user says, how do you keep your shoe soles so white? Uh, you can spray them with um, waterproofing spray. The same kind of thing you would put on your suede or your leather. You, you spray it on the white part of your shoe and that protects them. You have to reapply it periodically, but it, it does the same thing. Nancy says, I finally made it to a live event. Nancy came from Florida. Well, I'm so glad you made it, Nancy. Sheree says, hi, April. I live around Phoenix. So what is a good brand for a summer cropped jean? Oof, Phoenix is hot. I might look at something cropped in linen instead of denim or something lighter than denim. Um, I don't have any brands off the top of my head right now, but I would think lighter fabrics. Um, I did find, yeah, I've been shopping for the summer wardrobe guide and I have been looking at some lightweight cropped pants to include as options for those of you who do like more coverage. So the links for those will definitely be in the wardrobe guide. Um, Suzanne says, I'm excited. I ordered four basic crops and two colorful polo shirts. I'm anxious to, to receive them. Well, I hope they fit perfectly with your summer capsule wardrobe. Um, another Facebook user says, please tell us how to access your live stream without going through Facebook. Uh, well, I do also stream live onto YouTube. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, it goes there as well. Um, otherwise that's it. It's Facebook and, and YouTube. And we can put up a uh, link to my uh, YouTube channel when, uh, when I hop off here. I'll have to go find it. Um, Kimberly says, I wanted to tell you that I love the article you wrote in, Mother in honor of your mom for Mother's Day. Well, thank you. It was a fun article to write and um, and I loved finding the pictures of her and, and putting them together. So yeah, I love my mom. Veronica says, I have a petty year round, color on toes always cheers me up. Me too, Veronica, me too. I, I, I just feel like someone stole my toes if I look down and there's no color there. But um, because of 
everything. I had been delaying giving myself a pedicure because I can't go get my toes done like I usually do. <coughs> and removing gel polish is such a chore. I just did not want to have to take it off. So I kept putting it off. But yeah, I'm a year round pedicure kind of girl too. I mean, I go to yoga year round. People see my toes year round. I see my toes year round. I like looking at them with a pedicure. So you and me both. All right. Those are all the questions that I see. Um, and I hope this was really helpful. I will leave the links to the capsule wardrobe group, the uh, stunning style wardrobe guide waiting list page and my YouTube channel for you when we hop off here so that uh, you can get those. And I want to thank you for joining me. I always enjoy this midweek break with you and I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I would love to know how your summer capsule wardrobe is coming. If this has been helpful to you, if you've had any big aha moments or any personal style breakthroughs or capsule wardrobe breakthroughs, I would love to know about it. So please share that here in um, the comments. And if I missed your question, I apologize. I didn't see it. Facebook doesn't show me everything for some reason, but I'll come back and answer that later. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and a happy, happy Mother's Day to all of you.